Hi, Chris. Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Thanks for willing to do this. Of course. Of course. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah. This is your first interview, right? From what I could find. <laughs> um, uh, recorded, yeah. <laughs> but okay. um, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. And of course, thank you so much to anyone that's watching this interview. Mm. I'm so grateful to be here. Yeah. <laughs> So the uh, first thing I can, I can ask is, um, are, are you, are you uh, originally from California? Yeah, I was born and raised in California. I've been in Los Angeles my whole life. Okay. And was acting always something that you wanted to do? How much time do you have? Because it's a long story. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, so my whole acting journey, um, basically, I started at seven years old in the second grade. I was in like a little skit um, where we like passed the ball. And I remember like my classmates were like, oh, Eddie, that was so good. You can be an actor when you grow up and then like you know how like when kids they always say oh I want to be an actor and then like the next week they change their mind yeah. I was like the kid that like said I'm gonna be an actor and then I never changed my mind um so pretty much ever since then um acting's been like my passion I, I studied it in, in high school and college in regards to voiceover like I grew up obviously like with anime and video games and I love that kind of stuff um and when it came to acting I was kind of very um I was a little bit discouraged because, you know, being an Asian American person growing up, um, there was very few Asian American actors out there, uh, you know, representing in ways that aren't just like the nerdy guy or like, you know, like stereotypes or things like that. And so like, I was always told when I was like in theater class and stuff like that, not theater class, um, when I was growing up with like kids in like middle school and all that, um, they'd always be like, oh, you know, Eddie, you're going to be like, you're gonna be the fat kid or the nerdy kid and stuff like that. And I was a little bit discouraged, but then like I realized, like, hey, um, you know, video games and anime and all that stuff, like they have actors too. Um, and so ever since high school is when I started doing a lot of research and how to get into voiceover and stuff like that. Okay. And I, I did uh, looking at your website. It does look like you've taken classes with pretty much everybody who does anime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like to say um, one of the like most important things I learned in college is that like you never stop being a student. Yeah. Um, and so I'm always like super open to learning with anyone that like does what I want to do. Um, so if you look at like my website, like I trained with a lot of people that worked on Fire Emblem because I wanted to work on Fire Emblem. Mm -hmm. So what was your first um, any kind of anime experience doing uh, like background voices for different stuff? Yeah, yeah. So my first um, anime role, it was actually additional voices in the anime Ishida and Asakura. Okay. Um, and that was through Ascendant Animation, which is um, at the time run by Kiba Walker, who was someone that I worked with in the indie scene back in the day. Um, and so when he was starting up Ascendant and he was doing anime and stuff, he was like, hey, like, you know, I know you're good. I know you can do this. Like, do you want to just do some additional voice work um, to get some experience in? And I was like, yeah, of course, like I have training and all that. So we did it. It was really fun. Um, and then a year later, I ended up booking the Titans ride with them, too. So, mm -hmm. And speaking of that uh, series, um, I'm sure that was uh, just really fun to be a part of. Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a queer Filipino-American actor. So, like, being able to play an actual, like, queer character is always really fun. Could you easily relate to this character? Um... In a sense, yeah, because, you know, he was very, at the beginning of the series, Koichi was very um, self-doubting and he didn't really know where what he wanted to do um, in the peak of like growing up and whatnot. And um, at the time, I was kind of like in that weird phase too, where I was very discouraged and like I wanted to book more voiceover work professionally, but um, things just weren't happening because obviously 2020 happened. Yeah. Um, and so like I kind of like channeled a little bit of that energy into that character. And has there been a case with um, voiceover so far where you had to get into a really dark headspace? Um, I would say, yeah, there's a character I play. His name is Sign in the visual novel, The Divine Speaker. Um, it's a little bit of spoilers for his game, but, you know, um, he kind of has this facade of, like, being very playful and always acting like he's the life of the party and he's there to have fun and all that. But deep down inside, you know, he has a lot of, like... Um, issues with his family a lot of self-doubt a lot of um just like oh you know what like my life's not worth anything I'm gonna like put on this act and just live life as it is but um you know deep and down inside I hate myself um I never like really got to that point in my life but um understanding from that sort of perspective um I wanted to like you know um honor something like that because I know there are people out there that feel like they are like you know just skirting through life and whatnot yeah do you think you also have a personal preference for working on more uh, dramatic projects? Um, 
I think I just want to work in anything. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> and also considering your experience uh, with taking classes and did you, did you uh, take the dubbing easier or was it still difficult to get used to? Um, so I also, on top of studying theater, I also did a lot of music. So I was in band and choir oh. and all that stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you've heard, but you know, if anyone has musical training, they're usually better at um, learning dubbing skills pretty easily. So I picked that up. Um, I took dubbing with Bang Zoom back in 2015. I was still in college around that time. Okay. So um, that's, I, and then I've been training ever since. Yeah. And so it does sound like um, the way that was the way that you got the Fire Emblem audition was th through taking a workshop first? Um, honestly, I don't really know how that opportunity came about because um, I've been training with a lot of people that work on Fire Emblem and um, I, I always, whenever we introduce ourselves, I always like to say, hi, I'm Eddie. Um, my dream is to get to audition for Fire Emblem. So everyone out there knows. Yeah. Um, but I also did reach out to Cup of Tea specifically. So I'm not sure if like someone recommended me or if I got that audition just because I submitted, but it happened and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> How much of a time or how much of a time gap was there between you reaching out and then getting an audition for it? Oh, oh my goodness. So um, I think I reached out. It wasn't. Yeah, I reached. I did everything. I reached out in 2021. So, oh. um, yeah, it was pretty recent. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and things just like, like I said, I don't know the order of events of like what led to Fire Emblem happening, but I just, um, I kind of live my life and my philosophy with like taking classes and whatnot is to just like, everything is like a step towards getting to that goal. Um, so I don't know what it was that made it happen, but I'm grateful for everything that I did. Yeah. And um, having interviewed Caitlin Galt as well, what was your experience being directed by her? Oh, Caitlin's the sweetest. I love her so much. So um, I consider her one of my best mentors. Um, I, I took her class um, sometime earlier this year. Um, and then we actually got to meet up in person because we're both in LA. Yep. Um, and she's just so sweet. We, we met up for some coffee. And, um, you know, like I, I told her how much like I love working in this kind of stuff and how I would love to like, you know, follow her path. Like um, she's an actress, but she's also a director. Um, and I think that's something that I totally would love to do too. Mm -hmm. And was it just, uh, was there like a specific character in Fire Emblem that you wanted to play if you had the chance to, or was it always Saint? <laughs> um, no, so the funny thing is, is I never saw myself playing Saint like yeah. ever, because I've been a fan of Fire Emblem for a long time, and Saint is one of my favorite characters, but um, I usually get typecast for like younger, like higher pitched, like energetic kind of characters. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll never look Saint. Um, and then I go into the studio and Christian's like, you're playing Sane. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but there is one character that I know that I know isn't voiced yet. Um, I would love to play Kieran from Path of Radiance because Path okay. of Radiance is my favorite game. Yeah. And uh, did you find it easy to relate to Sane? <laughs> um, so yes and no. Um, so I, whenever I go into any session, whether it's Fire Emblem or not, um, obviously I want to honor the role in the character because like I care about these things so much, but at the same time, I don't want to have my baggage like weigh me down and like judge my whole performance and whatnot. So I kind of just like leave my body for a bit and let whatever I think Sane is go. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's a collaborative effort with the director, Christian, and um, the reps from Nintendo and whatnot. But I, I did know the character. So I did have a little bit of background knowledge. Um, and then if there was anything that I um, did, but, um, you know, the folks at Nintendo wanted to steer in a different direction, you know, um, we would all work together um, to get there. And it was really awesome because there were like a few moments where, um, you know, they didn't really know how to convey what they wanted. And I would say, hey, like, is it okay if I can like make a suggestion and um, read a line a different way? Um, I think the one in particular was the one where um, he's like laughing about, um, how Kent's like super stiffy and all that. Um, I tried to add like a little bit of a chuckle and just add a little bit of like breathing and life into it. And that's the line that ended up getting picked. Yeah. Do you have a single favorite line? Um, I love, I love Kent too. So anything about like referencing Sane and Kent's relationship is always really fun for me. Okay. And it does also seem vocally that it's pretty close to your natural voice. You can kind of tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, another, now that you reminded me, um, another line that I enjoyed was the death line. It's, um, I see a field of flowers because um, I went into it with the mindset of like, 
oh, I'm dying. I'm going to like draw it out. Like I see a field of flowers. Um, and then they were like, uh, you don't it, it, make it shorter. Um, and then we ended up just, you know, making something that was a little bit like sad, but like also brief. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It is pretty funny that even his attack lines talk about, you know, doing it for girls and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. He's such a fun character. Um, I remember when, um, you know, they were describing the character to me. I didn't want to like be like, oh yeah, I love this character so much. Um, so, um, you know, um, they were describing about how he's just very jolly and how much he loves setting the mood and making light of things. Um, and there's not really like a like facade, like for characters like Sylvain, you know, obviously there's a little bit of like self-hatred inside and whatnot. Sane's just happy to be here. Um, yeah. And I was happy to be there too. So it worked out well. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on his, um, like, well, I guess in uh, Kent included, what were your thoughts on his relationships with other characters? So Sane, like, he gets written off a lot just because, you know, he has that, like, flirty trope. You know, that's the, that's the um, archetype that he was made to be. Yeah. And a lot of people just write him off as, like, oh, you know, he's the guy that flirts with girls. But, um, you know, if you really, if you played um, Blazing Blade, the game that they're in, um, you really see that he does have a lot of respect for um, Lin as a person, um, as, a, as his lord. Um, he has a lot of respect working with Kent because Kent is someone that's been with him like, you know, since the very beginning. It's not necessarily overt, but there's a lot of, um, you know, he, he cares about the people that he, he's with in his supports. Mm -hmm. Were uh, you and Bo acquainted at all in real life? No, so I actually don't, um, I don't know Bo personally, and I really want to get to know him better. Um, but I, um, I do know of his work, obviously. But um, I also did... Um, a lot, uh, something that I like to do is I like to do a lot of research on, you know, actors that are in the scene and do, doing work. Um, and I did, I did research with Bo. I, I learned a little bit about his history from his website and all that. Um, and he seems like such an awesome guy. And, you know, his whole philosophy is about trying to live a happy life. And I'd love to get to talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. Well, it does seem too that you're pretty friendly with um, a good, a good, a, like a large majority of people who are in the cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm really good friends with um, John Henry, who plays Wolf, and Lily, who plays um, Ash, um, as well as Deneen, who plays Marsha. So um, I had like a whole team set up um, with their characters, and then I was like, all right, I just have to wait for Sane to come out so I can add his character to that team. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it wasn't very long ago that I got to uh, be John's first ever interview, and then I just did uh, Deneen like a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all amazing. I love them so much. They're also, um, I met them through classes too. So yeah. that's how I, we ended up all being friends. So in terms of playing heroes, do you have like a unit that you personally like to, like to use? Oh, do you want to see my plus 10 soul vein? Sure. <laughs> um, uh, well, I was kidding, but if you want me to actually pull it up, um, I've, I've been learning um, how, to, how to use Sane. I'm not that great at heroes. So I'd, um, if anyone in the subreddit like wants to help me build my characters, please let me know. Here's my plus 10 Sylvain, so I'm not like lying. Um, okay. But um, Sylvain's a character <laughs> that I really like. Um, I have like one merge of Sane, and obviously I have the characters that my friends play. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of any of the um, fallen alts for certain characters? Oh, so um, contrary to popular belief, my favorite um, Fire Emblem character is actually Ike. So as soon as Fallen Ike came out, I had to get him. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a um, single favorite game outside of um, Heroes in the franchise? Um, well, Fire Emblem is like my number one biggest favorite franchise, but um, some other franchises I love. I, um, I love Final Fantasy. I love Shin Megami Tensei Persona. I like um, Tales. Um, I like Atelier, if you guys know that series. Yeah. yeah. I know it's said too that like one of your or your single favorite anime is uh Card Captor Sakura. Yeah, yeah. I, that was my very first anime that I ever watched. Um, and I, I like to think it had a big effect on me growing up. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is cool that um of course you can probably know that uh like the the uh the second movie had a LA dub like and it was a yeah yeah that cast was so stacked too because <laughs> Kari played Sakura right yeah yeah I, I I remember I had that DVD when I was a kid I begged my parents to buy it for me <laughs> yeah are, are you mostly into um older series too or do you also like a lot of modern anime um my favorite modern anime is Haikyuu okay. um 
I, I really enjoyed it when I was in college. Um, I do, I do like a lot of the older series just because like, there's always that like nostalgia. Um, like I love talking about like even older video games, like the PS2 era is a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Like from, I got to probably the same with you. Um, for me, it's really cool that people like Julie Madeline are still actively working in anime. Cause I remember growing up with mm-hmm. her and like gray earth and series like that with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just replaying Atelier Rorona recently, and she plays the title character. So yeah. um, it, was, it was really funny. It was really cool. Yeah. So have you, uh, you, you, have you, probably, have you probably gotten the uh, chance to uh, um, audition for a lot of anime, too? Um, yeah, you know, it's pretty come and go. So I'm unrepresented right now. So if okay. any opportunity comes, um, I'm very grateful for it. And I, you know, I send it and I forget about it because I don't want to be disappointed. I'm looking forward to whatever opportunities open up, but um, yeah, you know, um, I, I was also kind of, um, I, I, you probably know, but I wanted to be a very big proponent of, um, you know, announcing saying like, you guys can make your dreams come true. And even if you're unrepresented, like you can still audition and book Fire Emblem. Right, yeah. So is there anything else that's uh, upcoming that you're part of you can safely talk about? Um, so. Say we talk about no, but I can talk about some few previous things that I can't that I did if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so if you guys have any like middle grade um readers in your family, um, I narrated the um debut novel for Tracy Badua. Let me I have it right here. Let me pull it up. Um, it's called Freddy versus the Family Curse. It's a really cute story about a Filipino American boy um, and his like whole family history. And um, there's like a whole thing about this Filipino amulet called an anting anting. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, the audiobook I narrated, um, that is already out and you guys can go ahead and check that out. Um, and then I don't think, I voiced some NPCs in Genshin Impact, okay. um, but I think some of them like were event only, so they're gone, but I think there's some that are there. So if you guys want to look out for me, um, play Inazuma. <laughs> okay. Well, I know that your, your career is uh, just blossoming, of course, but um, my final question with people is always asking, what do you want your legacy to be? Um, I have thought about it. Okay. Um, my, my biggest thing as an actor is I really want people that identify the same way that I do. You know, if you're queer and you're Filipino American or Asian American or person of color, um, if you felt like you were discouraged because there weren't people like you that were in the media that you love, um, I wanted to be an example of a person that is doing it and that, you know, inspires you to do it if you want to do it. Um, so yeah, I've, I, I hope that's something that um, I, can, I can reach out to other people. And um, you know, if, you, if you guys have any questions, like I'm always more than happy to help you guys out because you know, I always wish I had mentors in my journey and I wanna be that for people too. And is there anything that you wanna to say to the uh, Fire Emblem community? Oh my God, please. Um, I wanna talk about Fire Emblem with you guys so much. Obviously I can't shut up about it. I love it so much. But also, um, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, this really is my life's biggest dream come true. And I'm so grateful to have met so many of you guys and hear all your stories about how you grew up with Blazing Blade. And you too, Chris. I'm so grateful to have met you because I've actually listened to the interviews that you've done with my friends. So oh, thank it's you. awesome to get to speak to you. Yeah, you as well. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sure you've seen too that once once you were revealed as saying that like the general fan base consensus was that you were doing an amazing job. <laughs> Um, I'm really grateful for that. I, it, it's still, I'm still at this like point where it doesn't feel real because I've had to hold it in for so long. But, um, on the other end, like getting to talk about this with so many people and hearing all these positive words, like it really just makes me feel so great. And, um, I really hope that like this dream never ends. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'm glad that we got to do this. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Chris, and everyone that's watching the video. Yeah, I'll be sure to send it to you once I have it up as well. Yeah, keep in touch. Take care. Bye. Bye.